need to wait. Can you help him? Good morning. And welcome to worship at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Liverpool, New York, as we celebrate the seventh Sunday in Epiphany. Whether you're with us this morning in person or online, welcome, and know that your presence always enriches our worship. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Joseph lives it in Egypt. Jesus preaches it in the gospel. The Spirit guides us into merciful lives with the power of forgiveness to reconcile what is fractured and divided. Such merciful living is the baptismal blessing of having put on Christ. It is the gift of the life-giving Spirit. It is a reflection of God's glory revealed in Christ. I invite you all to join me in a time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. I invite you to join in singing hymn 638, 638, Blessed Assurance, and we will sing all three stanzas, and the words will be up on the screen. Please stand as you're able.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred, we may sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. And where there is despair, hope. Grant, O Divine Master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Our reading for, is from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be nothing growing or to harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to survivors, or to Pharaoh, and lord of his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me. You and your children, and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept with them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is, we'll read a selection from Psalm 37 responsibly. I will begin with the odd verses, and you may follow with the even verses. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord. He shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. The Lord will make your vindication as clear as the light and the justice of your case like the new sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger. Be brave to love. Do not be provoked. It leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. In the middle of the wild, the wicked shall be no more. Even if you search out their place, they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land. They will delight in abundance of peace. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from you, O Lord. You are their stronghold in time of trouble. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind a seed in its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. 
What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spirit that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. According to Luke. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you, for even sinners do the same? If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for God is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Last week in the Gospel, Jesus spoke of those who are blessed, the poor, the hungry, and mournful. He also spoke of those who experience woe, the rich, those who've had their fill, and those who laugh now. Jesus' words of blessing and woe are meant to kind of turn things upside down, to remind us that it's not our abundance or our wealth in which we experience God's blessing, but rather in our need and in our openness 
to trust God rather than ourselves and all our stuff. Perhaps those who are listening, including us, may have felt a little uncomfortable wondering where we fall in all those blessings and woes. Perhaps we reflected on these questions. Do we rely only on ourselves and our abundance? Do we truly put our trust in God? And perhaps we were all left with one final question. What now? Today, Jesus' sermon from last week continues, and it seems to anticipate this very question. For Jesus, it is truly all about love. And yet, his words today may seem to be a bit of a, a twist from those we're used to hearing. Love your enemies? Bless those who curse you? Do to others as you would have them do to you? Maybe we've heard that last one somewhere. Our first reading is the story of Joseph and his older brothers who really didn't like him at all. So much so that they had him thrown down into a pit and left him to die. But later, they changed their minds only to sell him into slavery so they could get something out of it anyway. The story they give to their father, however, is that Joseph had been killed by a wild animal. Well, many years later, there was drought and famine in the land, so all the people came to Pharaoh's governor for their food allotment. When the brothers came to get their provisions for their family, they are shocked and dismayed to see that the governor is none other than their younger brother, Joseph. Perhaps they are even more shocked, however, by his reception, his reaction to them. Rather than treating them as they deserved, Joseph embraces them with mercy and forgiveness, giving them and their families all that they needed and more. The story of Joseph offers us an example today of the power and forgiveness and mercy that Jesus is speaking about. Jesus tells all who listen including us. If you do good to those who do good to you, so what? Everyone does that. But when you love, when you forgive, when you give expecting nothing in return, your reward will be great. You will be called children of the Most High. Jesus tells us to love our enemies. It's a command that was certainly shocking to those of his time, and it is still shocking and pretty radical even for us today, especially during this time of division and hatred in our country, especially during a pandemic which fills folks with fear and mistrust. Many of us actually seem to be a little proud of our rage and feel entitled to our anger, which perhaps reveals just how far we have strayed from the way of our Lord. To be sure, this thing that Jesus asks of us, it is hard. It is definitely hard. We want to hate our enemies. After all, they hate us, don't they? They do seem to want the worst of us, from us, for us. 
then to have us offer mercy and grace? Well, that is just not fair. How can we love those of whom we'd really rather hate? Well, I believe that it all begins with prayer. We start simply by praying for them, praying that God would touch their hearts so that they too might know the love of God, so that they might bend toward God's will for peace among us all. The Reverend James C. Howell notes that the golden rule may be Jesus' least Jesus-y and yet most popular American or most American saying. You, may, you probably remember it like this. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Right? We remember that. Powell writes, however, this is not a tit-for-tat deal. Jesus invites us to dig deep into our need for kindness and mercy as the simplest motivation to be kind and merciful to others. In Dr. Howell's book, The Beatitudes for Today, he writes, How distant is mercy from all of the ad campaigns with which we are peppered with each day. They curiously pander to me, he says. You deserve only the best mattress. You deserve a new car. You deserve a week in the Bahamas. These billboards and commercials do not know me, but they do drive me away from mercy, which has nothing to do with deserving at all. We are so practiced at self-justification, at rationalize, rational, yes, what she said. Rationalizing. No. Rationalizing. <gasps> Yay! Well, anyway, I may not be good at saying it, but we're good at doing it. And explaining. Yeah, we're good at that, too. We feel entitled, don't we? I'm owed a good life, and if I don't get it, well, I get busy blaming somebody else. And so mercy is a stranger. End quote. Mercy, much like the word woe, is really not a word that we use very much today. We sometimes speak of forgiveness, but even then, how often are we compelled to forgive? It almost seems as if we're uncomfortable with the language of forgiveness. Perhaps we're even a bit embarrassed by it. When someone says, I'm sorry, how do we respond? Think about that. I guess that most of us are likely to respond, oh, don't worry about it, or it was nothing, even if it was really something. How often do the, we use the words, I forgive you, or you are forgiven? They seem almost like forgotten phrases, don't they? Yet forgiveness is so important, not only for the one being forgiven, but also for the one who is doing the forgiving. Perhaps we should ask, what is mercy? Dr. Howell invites us to think back over the course of our lives however long or short that may be. Mercy is not something that we can define so much as something for which we cry out for in desperation, 
a kid being pounded into the pavement by a bully, cries out for mercy. A terrible, horrible mistake has been made, smashing a well-arranged life, and the regret is so intense that no strategy could ever make a difference. The only cry left to make is mercy. Deep down, we all crave mercy. Don't we want to be loved despite our craziness, our brokenness, or our sinfulness? And don't we truly need to be tender, merciful, and forgiving to others as well? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Still, we rather not expose our shame and sinfulness. As Dr. Howell put it, we are not very open to mercy, and we are not so merciful. So we receive no mercy. Jesus seems to have anticipated the reluctance of his followers. However, teaching mercy much as he does prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive as we forgive. The merciful shall receive mercy. As Pastor Gail Walling wrote this week, for many of us, mercy is difficult. We want to forgive the deserving, not the unrepentant. We want to do good things for the ones that we deem worthy, not those other people. We want to love those who receive our affection and return it in kind. We feel no obligation to those who reject us. Yet, Jesus teaches his followers to love their enemies, those folk who wish them harm, adversaries like the Romans, the tax collectors, the guy who cheats at the fish market, and the woman who is a nasty gossip. Pastor Walling notes that this is no small task, upending every survival instinct we have, requiring a complete reorientation of our lives, our attitudes, our words, and our actions. In 2012, on the Sunday after the terrible events at Sandy Hook Elementary School, a pastor raised up in prayer all the names of those precious children who had been killed along with all of the adults who died with them. And then, reluctantly, in obedience to our Lord's command, lifted up the name of the gunman as well. Loving our enemies is not easy. We often shy away from mercy and forgiveness language so that even the words, I forgive you, seem to make us feel kind of uncomfortable, especially when the other doesn't seem remorseful at all. On the contrary, they appear to be completely unforgivable. Yet, this is what Jesus requires of us. Love your enemies and pray for them. This includes those who may be on the other side of the political divide, those who are different in whatever ways that are important to us. Those who may even wish to harm us or our loved ones. Love your enemies. This means being merciful and compassionate, whether the hurt is curable or not. 
whether the wrong can be righted or not. In mercy, we realize that we don't have all the answers, and we have no need to justify or explain. Mercy simply listens to the other, trying to walk in their shoes, if only for a moment, trying to understand, even when understanding seems impossible. We offer mercy and compassion in the name of the Lord because Jesus tells us to love our enemies because we ourselves have received mercy in the Lord even though we are certainly undeserving. And finally, we're able to offer mercy and compassion because Jesus taught us to boldly pray in his name. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Amen. Our hymn of the day is hymn number 603, God When Human Bonds Are Broken, hymn number 603. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. After the words, God of grace, you may respond, hear our prayer. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable wealth for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy that we delight with an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and a civil unrest. 
release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled, especially those on our prayer list and those we lift up now, out loud or in our hearts. We pray for those who are suffering from the cold without appropriate heat. For those who are long estranged from family and friends. And for those who live in danger in the United States and in Europe and in elsewhere around the world. God of grace. Hear our prayer. You bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with, humil with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom and we have raised them to imperishable and eternal life. Sustain us by faith, by the promise of resurrection. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence of faith through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Yes. And also with you. We're still trying to stay safe due to the pandemic. We're still not shaking hands or hugging our church family members, but we can and we should offer a sign of God's peace, not just to those who are present in person, but later to those who cannot be here for whatever reason, um, for family that we might be estranged from, um, for loved ones who are far away. And so we should offer God's peace to them in whatever way we're able, with a wave, a smile, a text, an email, a card, or a letter. Let's continue to reach out to others with God's love and peace. God works in us, through us, and through our giving to support the ministries of God in our church, including the care of those in need. If you need assistance of any kind, please let Pastor Deb know. If you have a stable income and can give even a little bit more, we deeply appreciate your generosity. Let's be a blessing for others as Christ has been a blessing for us all.
Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and in the miracle turned to wine, of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Almighty and merciful God, you are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O God, Lord Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with the heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. And 
now let us pray together using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now I invite you to take out your little communion kit, peel back the top layer to reveal the wafer, and then put it in your hand, and then peel back the bottom layer to reveal the juice, and then hold them up so that I know when everyone is ready. God's gift of grace. This is the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace. In your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now I have a couple of announcements. Of course, we have been broadcasting on Facebook Live uh, this morning, and so we welcome everybody who has joined us on Facebook Live. We're so glad you're here. This video, for those who may have tuned in late or want to watch later, will be posted to our Facebook page immediately following worship and later on to our YouTube channel, both of which can be accessed from our website at www.stpaulsliverpool.org. If you or someone you know might benefit from pastoral care or contact, please let us know. Let me know. Call the office and leave a message or send me an email. If it's an emergency, please call my cell phone or send me a text message and I will reach out however I'm able. Uh, I want to welcome Mary and the choir back. <laughs> so glad to, to have all your voices back. Um, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Pat, that the council voted to step back from the mask requirement to where we were before the spike. So at this time, um, masks are optional if you've been vaccinated. 
If you have not been vaccinated, they are required. So, and if you don't want to tell us one way or another, they're required. So please uh, make that note. And also, if you are not feeling well, if you even just feel a little icky or have a bit of a sore throat, please stay home so that you can help us to prevent passing along whatever it is that you may be suffering from. Also, um, something is coming up in March. Any guesses? Lent. You know, at St. Stephen, I heard, let's see, spring, St. Patrick's Day, all this stuff. Lent. And the first week of March is Ash Wednesday. So March 2nd, um, there will be a service at 5.30 at St. Stephen and 7.30 at St. Paul's. Um, but in addition to that, everyone will be receiving a little packet with ashes and directions. So if you're not comfortable or your schedule doesn't allow you to get to the service at that time, you can uh, put uh, ashes on your forehead yourself and say the accompanying prayers. For those of you who come to worship, much like the communion kits, there will be little baggies with ashes. If you want, you can bring the one you received. Um, and you will be doing ashes to yourself rather than, you know, everybody being exposed to me doing them. So um, we will have a full service, just as we always have, but we will doing, be doing ashes in place. Also, the very next day, which would be Thursday, March 3rd, we will begin our Lenten study on a book called uh, Introducing the Lutherans. I believe is what it is. Um, so uh, it's, we will be uh, going through basically one full chapter uh, every week throughout it. It's, it's kind of like who we are, where we came from, why we do what we do, and it's, it's really a wonderful, wonderful book, um, not just for newbies to the Lutheran Church, but I have heard folks who you know, have been lifelong Lutherans for generations say that they really enjoyed the book as well. Um, and all together we have conversations. So those, uh, those studies will be, those book study days will be on Thursday mornings at 10.30 to noon. If you are interested in an evening study, I would be willing to add one. But unless, you know, more than like two or three people come and tell me, well, more than one, okay, um, that, then it, it's not really a good thing to do. So I end up sitting on Zoom all by myself, which is kind of boring, you know, one box um, and, and so forth. So that is all I have for announcements today. Um, yeah, I don't think there is anything else. So I invite you to stand as you're able for the blessing. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is hymn number 733, 733, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Christ into a weary world and share this good news. Thanks be to God. Thank you.